Obama says cybercrime is no April Fool's joke. Another reason not to steal HBO and tech leaders take a stand against discrimination. Live from the inside of your refrigerator, Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. It's time for Twit's annual audience survey, and we want to hear from you. Please visit twit.tv slash survey and let us know what you think. It only takes a few minutes, and your anonymous feedback will help us make Twit even better. We thank you so much for your continued support. Twit.tv slash survey. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 307 for Wednesday, April 1st, 2015. This episode is brought to you by Blue Apron. Blue Apron will send you all of the ingredients to cook fresh, delicious meals with simple step-by-step -step instructions right to your door. See what's on the menu this week and get your first two meals free by going to blueapron.com slash twit. That's blueapron.com slash twit. Welcome back to Tech News Tonight. I am Megan Maroney. Today is April Fool's Day, and unlike the rest of you Scrooges on the internet, I am still a big fan of this holiday. The rubber band on the kitchen faucet that makes the water spray into your face never fails to amuse, especially when I have forgotten that I've put it there. But before we get started today, I wanted to assure you that all of the stories you're about to hear are true. The participants are not actors, just like the People's Court. Now let's get to our top story. President Obama signed an executive order today to target malicious hackers outside of the U.S. Joining us to talk about this story and a few others is John Fingus, Associate Editor at Engadget. Welcome, John. Hey. Nice to, nice to speak on the show. Yeah, nice to have you on. It's our first time together. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you write that the U.S. doesn't have a jurisdiction to officially charge and punish foreign cyber criminals. Uh, how does today's executive order get around that? Okay, well, basically, uh, it sort of uh, hurt, hurts their financial sources. So, like, for example, like they can freeze assets or, you know, and, ba and basically make life difficult so that they can't actually, they can't actually, you know, you know, profit from their attacks, or if if they're using this just for funding attacks, to actually do that. So basically, you know, like they can't. You know, well, if we can't uh, charge them, we'll at least at least make them regret doing it. Right. So it's the kind of sanctions that he used against North Korea after the Sony attack. Is that the same sort of thing? Um, see, actually, I, I have to admit, I'm not like I'm not too well versed in the North Korea attack, but yeah, like I would say that. Well, in this case, it's it, it almost strikes me more like. Diplomatic relations, but targeted like to a very to like down to the individual if it gets to that point. Like you know, normally like instead of like targeting whole countries, well, we're just going to target like say this cyber gang or or this particular hacker, and then uh, deal with them that way. Right. So the White House says these uh, sanctions will be limited to the most significant targets, uh, but you argue that it's hard to know where they're going to draw the line. I mean, what kind of in negative ways do you think they might put this into practice? Yeah. Well, I think there's probably like whoever they target is probably going to be somebody somebody who did something wrong. So like that's not necessarily an issue. It's more just like you know proportionate response and things like that. And, you know, like some like some script kitty in his, in his basement who you know who happens to hit a bank or something like that. Like you know if he does a lot of damage, well, is that going to count as a significant threat? Uh, like it's going to be one of those things where like. We're really just going to have to see what the, what the uh, government actually does, like whether they actually use proper judgment and uh, attack like people who are genuinely like major threats, like state-sponsored hackers or terrorists or uh, or criminals. Right. So not just like researchers or whistleblowers, not the Edward yeah. Snowden types. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was one. Of, actually, one of the things that kind of ran through my mind at first was like, is this going to mean that Edward Snowden's going to have to watch his back more so than usual? Um, I don't think so. I mean, there's a number of reasons why, but like this is really for targeting like, you know, ongoing criminal operations and so on, like not like leaks and so on. So there shouldn't be any reason to worry about it. Right. So let's move on to the, today's cord cutter news. Sling TV announced that subscribers will be able to add HBO to their subscription TV package for another $15 a month. Now, the Wall Street Journal says the new channel will be available in time for the April 12th Game of Thrones premiere. Now, is this a good option for people who don't have traditional cable or people who don't have Apple TV where you could also get this for $15? 
Yeah. Oh, that's a, absolutely. Because I mean, like, one of the main reasons that a lot of people say, "Well, I like I." The only reason I have cable TV is because I still I still need to watch my HBO. I need to watch my Game of Thrones. So, like, being able to have like HBO and a bunch of channels that generally people consider important, like AMC, like that's huge. That means you can actually like. Uh, for a lot of people, like thirty-five dollars a month will cover a, not all the bases, but a lot of them. So, like, it makes it a lot cheaper than, like, say, you know, spending like dozens of dollars, maybe over a hundred dollars on, on some cable package you really don't need. Right. So the the Sling TV, the live TV package is twenty dollars a month. So then the HBO would be additional fifteen dollars a month. Yep. Um, so the biggest draw for Sling TV, I mean, it's like live ESPN. Isn't that the real difference between this and a lot of the other services? Oh yeah, actually, uh, it is an important point. Like, so you know, for, uh, I don't, I don't think PlayStation View has it, and and so on. So, like, being able to get again, like, having important networks that the ones that people actually watch, like day in day out, uh, is going to be actually uh, really important. And I mean, adding HBO just kind of like that's like the icing on the cake almost. Right, but it still does seem like there's a lot of stuff thrown in there that I'm not sure. I mean, I don't know. I guess people still watch Lifetime or A and E, <laughs> but I I don't know yeah. any of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's not exactly it's not exactly the best mix, but I'd say like, I mean, a lot of people have like maybe a few channels that they tend to watch like uh, religiously, and and Sling, well, Dish I should say has done a uh, better job than uh, than at least some people of actually getting the channels that you are actually you actually want to watch without giving you way too much. Like PlayStation View is like, I'm it's a huge selection, but you're also paying like fifty to seventy dollars a month, and then at that point, it's almost like you're paying for another cable bill, it's just that it's through the internet. Right. So you also wrote today about a new mobile app for Facebook called Riff. Tell us a little bit about what Riff does. Riff is interesting. Um, I kind of like to think of it as sort of like group vines. What you basically do is you create, you record a twenty second clip, um, and if well, if you're the if you're starting this out, you set a topic and basically say, okay, like say, you know, what are you doing right now? So, what happens after that is after you share this video uh, on on Riff, like you basically other people like can tack on their videos to it, so you can actually create these like these like ever growing themed videos around certain things. So, uh, so it's really kind of, really kind of neat actually. I don't know if it'll, it'll, if it'll catch on in the same way that say Vine has or Instagram video has, but it's, uh, but it's like showing that Facebook is like trying to find new ways to, uh, to, uh, get you to post videos on Facebook and, uh, and uh, of course, you know, run ads on those videos and things like that. Right. So does it work just, I mean, if you put a video up on Facebook, can any of your Facebook friends participate it or do you, do you invite certain friends to participate? Uh, okay. Um, see, actually, I don't know if they actually explicitly said that you can, <laughs> that you can, um, that you can uh, in, like invite only specific friends, but I mean, like, I know it's limited to your friends list, so you don't have to worry about some some random person showing up on your on your uh, your uh, video clips. But um, one of the things that can happen is that you can have sort of like a friends of friends thing going. So at a certain so if you're if you're not careful, you could probably have like some gigantic clip that's got like like you know dozens of, dozens or hundreds of people adding videos. So. Um, thankfully, you've got some control over it. You can like you know delete clips if somebody decides to like pull, you know, pull a fast one on you, and um, people can report videos if it really gets bad. Although I, although I hope you don't end up in the point where you've got like dozens of people posting posting nasty videos uh, against your will. I, yeah, I hope not too. Now, yesterday Facebook announced the, the new scrapbook feature that lets you catalog all your kids' pictures, and um, I think the idea was that you would turn over this page to your child when they turn thirteen, and and my take on that was like they're they just want another generation of facebook so i think there's always an ulterior motive i wonder what their ulterior motive what they're trying to find out just i mean you know video it's like they can see more i mean do you think they're going to be looking through these what's in the background what are you you know what's what's what books are you reading like do you think that they're going to be using this to sell us more ads okay oh well ads are definitely part a part of the picture but i don't think they'll necessarily be like sifting through your videos to find out like what you're posting and so on but what the, what they probably do is they'll just like because this encourages you to post more video on Facebook this gives them more opportunities to to run ads that are probably based on like say your regular Facebook data and uh, so on uh, but to me what they're doing is they're really just 
experimenting, experimenting to see what sticks in terms of video, like you know, because I mean, they they probably saw Vine and they thought like, who the he- uh, like who the heck thought that six second videos would be so huge? So mm-hmm. they're saying, well, let's see if we can do that before Twitter does it again. So. Yeah, exactly. I know one of the April Fool's jokes I thought I saw today, Funny or Die, they had. Uh, a site. I don't know if you saw it, but it was one and a half second videos. That was their joke. And, you know, I think the Huffington Post said, you know, that's really good. And it's, of course, like our attention spans really are only about a second and a half. So I don't know if I said a minute and a half. The videos were a second and a half. So yeah, <laughs> that is where we're headed, I think. Well, John, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, John is the editor, uh, associate editor at Engadget. Uh, and where can people follow you on Twitter? Okay, well, you can follow me at, at John Fingus on Twitter, and of course, I'm uh, all over the internet elsewhere. So if you, if you don't like the Twitter, it's like you can definitely find me somewhere. All right, thank you so much, John. Take care. Right, you're welcome. You too. Coming up, GitHub, GoDaddy, and more tech stories that are not April Fool's jokes. But first, Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Blue Apron, which is a really cool little company with a mission to help you make delicious, easy meals by delivering all the ingredients ready to cook right to your door. For less than $10 a meal, Blue Apron sends you fresh ingredients perfectly proportioned with step-by-step recipe instructions, including beautifully printed pictures. Do you get lost and frightened and scared in the grocery store? Maybe that's just me. No problem with a Blue Apron. It's perfect. You, they give you everything right to your door. You don't even ever have to even think about the grocery store anymore. Blue Apron is perfect for date night, cooking with friends, and they even offer family plans with kid-friendly ingredients so the whole family can eat well and have fun preparing the meals together. Each balanced meal is 500 to 700 calories per serving, and so yummy you would never know. Cooking takes about a half an hour. Shipping is free, and the menus are always new. They won't send you the same meal twice. They work around your schedule and your dietary preferences, and Blue Apron's ex- Experts source only the best ingredients for incredible meals like pan-seared chicken verju or roasted Japanese sweet potatoes. Blue Apron, it's a better way to cook. Check out this week's menu and get your first two meals free by going to blueapron.com slash twit. That's right, two free meals just for going to blueapron.com slash twit. And we thank Blue Apron for their support of Tech News Tonight. Now on to a few more stories we're following today. The sustained cyber hack against code sharing website GitHub has ended. The company tweeted yesterday that all of their systems are now operating normally. The five day long DDoS attacks originated in China, according to security experts. The New York Times reports that this attack didn't simply block traffic, but was a more aggressive tactic that included going after sites outside of China's borders that were deemed objectionable by Beijing. Leaders in the tech industry continue to make a stand against discrimination, to take a stand against discrimination. Last week, we told you about how Apple CEO Tim Cook and Salesforce.com CEO Mark Benioff criticized the governor of Indiana for enacting a law that could make it legal to deny services to the LGBT community. Now, a group of tech industry leaders issued a joint statement against discriminatory bills in all 50 states. GoDaddy is all grown up. First, they did away with the sexist Super Bowl commercials, and this morning they made their public trading debut. Reuters reports that the company's stock rose 34% today and was seen as a bargain for investors. And finally, there's a new trend on Periscope I thought you should know about. It's called fridging, and it's probably exactly what you think it is, showing people the inside of your refrigerator. Periscope is Twitter's live streaming app that lets you send live video from your smartphone out into the world with a click of a button. It's either the hottest new trend or a way journalists feed their narcissism, depending on who you ask. Now, whether you support Twitter's Periscope or the indie live streaming app Meerkat that came out last month, you need to know that people are apparently very, very interested in what the inside of your refrigerator looks like. So if you want to be a broadcaster, but you are starved for content, you know where to go. I wish this were an April Fool's joke, but the reality is that people are very, very bored. I want to thank everyone who's been tagging or sending in selfies, watching or listening to Tech News Tonight. Today's TN2 selfie fan of the day is Don Acri, who wrote, Love your show, Megan. Welcome back. Thank you. This is my selfie of my feet, watching TN2. Send us your selfies. Tag your picture with hashtag TN2Selfie on Twitter, Google+, Instagram, or via email to TN2 at twit.tv. Tell us a little bit about yourself. We might choose yours to show your selfie on the show. And that is 
it for this edition of Tech News Tonight, and partly because Leo Laporte is now meerkatting or periscoping or just taking a video of me doing the show. You can subscribe to this show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write to us at TN2 at twit.tv, and you can watch us live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. I am Megan Maroney. Thank you for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.